A Brighter Summer Day, the four-hour-long epic by Edward Young, is not only one of the greatest films in East Asian cinema, it is simply one of the greatest films ever made in film history. Sure, it is long, but the length of the film is partly what makes it great. In the four hours, not a single shot is wasted. Every image, every dialogue, every character, every object, every color is there for a reason. Now, let us take a look at this masterpiece together and see how Young achieves his greatness in the film. Young is very good at emphasizing the isolation of characters through the way he positions them in a group of people. One of the most famous examples of this is perhaps the opening sequence of his other film, E.E. E. Notice how in the beginning, Xiao Si is separated from the rest of the students, while others remain static most of the time. Xiao Si is the one in motion. When he leaves his seat, the shot continues and we see the empty seat for more than 10 seconds. The empty seat in the crowded hall is a foreshadow of Xiao Si's fate in the end. He will eventually leave everyone else and be left alone. Similarly, in this scene, when the entire family is eating dinner together, notice the pillar in the middle of the frame and how Xiao Si is the only one who is on the left side of the line. This shows us that he is in fact separated from the rest of the family. Although Yang separates Xiao Si from others, he is not completely alone because there is always someone with him. For example, in this scene, we see Cat leaving right after Xiao Si leaves. In this shot, Xiao Ma comes back and joins Xiao Si. In this shot, notice how half of the body of Xiao Si's mother is on the left side of the line. However, the moment when he kills Xiao Ming, he becomes completely alone. We see him in the center of the frame, far from the rest of the crowd, and there is no longer anyone beside him except the corpse of Xiao Ming. Yang not only uses this technique to separate Xiao Si from others, he uses it on other characters as well. Let us look at this scene. See how everyone else remains rather static and Honey is the only one who moves. Here he is being completely isolated from the crowd. He is left alone in the center of the shot like Pierre who goes to assassinate Napoleon in War and Peace. Meanwhile, at the end of the film, Xiao Ming's sister is also being isolated from the rest of the choir. Yang singles her out to emphasize the sorrow she feels after struggling to help his brother to find the light. Throughout the film, Yang indicates the ending to us many times. In this shot, Notice how Edward shows us the two kitchen knives. We see a lot of motion in the shot, but the two kitchen knives always remain in the center of the frame. It seems very unlikely that Yang put the knives there for no reason. Like I said earlier, every object in the film is there for a reason. The knives foreshadows the murder at the very end of the film. However, a more obvious foreshadow perhaps appears in this scene. We see cat stabbing the female mannequin, which resembles this scene. 
因为小四 stabs 小明。没有出息啊你！不要脸，没有出息啊！<laughs> And in this scene, Xiao Si basically kills Xiao Ming in a symbolic way. We see that before Xiao Si kills Xiao Ming physically, he has already killed her symbolically. At the same time, they kill each other. If Xiao Ming is being killed physically, then Xiao Si is killed spiritually. We also see a few hints of it in the film. Similar to the foreshadowing of Xiao Ming's physical death, Yang also foreshadows the spiritual death of Xiao Si. Notice how in this scene, it is actually Xiao Ming who shoots at Xiao Si and symbolically kills him. And the photo of the Japanese woman who killed herself in World War II resembles the fate of Xiao Si in the end. Then in this shot, Xiao Si turns his back to the camera and stands in a position that reminds us of the crucifixion of Jesus. In a brighter summer day, light is perhaps the most important motif. The first image we see is a light bulb that kindles in the darkness. It signifies the light inside the characters, and as you probably noticed, light bulbs are everywhere in the film, especially in the most important scenes. When Hani enlightens Xiao Si with his speech about war and peace, there's a light bulb right above their heads. We see a light bulb at the opening scene of the story, and we see it in the end. And it is Xiao Si himself who destroys it, which is another way of showing us that he has already destroyed the light inside him. Similar to the light bulb. The flashlight is also a symbol of light. When Xiao Si returns the flashlight, he is also giving up the light inside him. Throughout the film. We also see Xiao Si turning the light switch on and off. This symbolizes that he is swinging between light and darkness. As we can see, the film starts in the day and ends at night. The transformation of Xiao Si's father is also shown through the contrast between light and darkness. Other than light, color is also a very important part of the film. Green symbolizes youth and happiness. Red foreshadows violent. And pink represents love.
In a bright summer day, Edward Young is a master of the iceberg theory. Although the film spends four hours showing us the life of a teenager, what Young is really commenting on is the suppression under martial law in Taiwan in the 60s. When Xiao Zhu's parents are talking about their flight to Taiwan, we see a row of tanks passing the bus. Notice how a man gets close to the window and looks outside. In the next shot, we see the tanks. This shot is very meaningful because it gives us a glimpse of the big historical background on the tour. It is not the only time that we see tanks in the film. Two and a half hours later, the tanks show up again, and when Xiaoming and Xiao Si are having an argument, both times the tanks are there to foreshadow some kind of conflict that is about to come. Similarly, the American equipment cat and airplane use the target practice on the shooting range. and the word revolution on the wall all gives us a glimpse of the historical background of the film. Another important topic that is being discussed in the film is the conflict between Bensheng-ren, people who grew up in Taiwan, and Waisheng-ren, mainlanders who fled to Taiwan with the Nationalist Party. This conflict in the film is being represented as the conflict between 217 Gang and Little Park Boys. We can tell the character's identity based on the dialect they use. In this scene, the watchman is speaking Shandong dialect. Notice how the principal is speaking with a southern accent. And the guard in this scene is speaking with a northern one. Wang is from Shanghai, so he speaks Shanghainese throughout the film. Although Xiao's father speaks Shanghainese as well, when he loses his temper in this shot, we finally hear him speaking Cantonese, which reveals his origin of coming from a poor family in Canton. Also, notice that the voice that is captured here is speaking the Sichuan dialect showing us that the 217 gang is formed by mainlanders. And in this scene, the character here is speaking Taiwanese with honey, showing us that the Little Park boys are formed by Taiwanese. The tragedy of Xiao Si reflects the tragedy of a generation. I want to end with a quote from Pushkin. 
When in the woods, you saw the young man, Sir, and met the look of his distinguished eyes. Then did you sigh.